Hello, everybody. Welcome here today. I'm going to go ahead and introduce you to our panelists. First, we have online Afeka Maturity, professional econ economist as a resource for the panel. And we also have sorry, Senator Bill Tallman, New Mexico Senator, District 18, Albuquerque. He is vice chair to the Senate Health and Public Affairs Committee and vice chair to Transportation Infrastructure Revenue Subcommittee. Senator Tallman earned his BA from Syracuse University and his MPA from the University of Cincinnati. His professional experience includes working as deputy city manager for Santa Fe, New Mexico, and as a city manager for multiple cities across the US. Representative Joy Garrett, State Representative, District 29, Albuquerque. She is Chair, Transportation Infrastructure Revenue Subcommittee. As a lifelong teacher and a mentor, Joy has worked with students from pre-K through, through university level. Joy is the granddaughter of homesteaders from the small town of Northern New Mexico and is passionate about protecting the unique cultures and traditions of our state. Dennis Montoya, Rio Rancho, immediate past state director of the League of the United Latin American Citizens, LULAC. Mr. Montoya was the delegate to recent national conference of the LULAC in Puerto Rico. He is active in public and civil rights affairs statewide. A retired, a retired civil rights attorney, Mr. Montoya, is, high, is a high school math and science teacher. Welcome, guys. Here you go. I'm going to go ahead and hand off the mic to Mr. Tallman. Oh, good morning, everyone. Uh, very glad to be here and participate in this, uh, this session um, to talk about a very important project, a very important problem and issue that unfortunately hasn't uh, garnered the attention that it needs. You know, for, uh, for many years, uh, the United States was the envy of the world as far as infrastructure, but that's no longer true. You know, people go overseas and they come back to the United States and we look like a third world country. We haven't made the major investments that we need to in infrastructure. One reason for that is we can't agree on how to finance it. However, we're going to share with you a proven and successful way to finance um, capital improvement projects. Um, for uh, far too long, uh, not invest. We haven't uh, invested uh, a sufficient amount of money in infrastructure. Um, the, I know that for many of you, uh, water is an is a important issue. Um, you know, and Biden uh, signed uh, the infrastructure bill in November, it was $1.1 trillion. And actually only half of that was new money. Uh, the other half was just a re reenactment, reauthorization of existing money. Um, some people are saying that we could spend the entire $1.1 trillion just on infrastructure. Here in New Mexico, a uh, state engineer says we need $2 billion for water infrastructure, but we're only getting one six or $350 million for water infrastructure. That's, again, that's only one six of what we need. There is no money in this bill, in the, in the, in the Biden bill for desalinization, there's no money to bring water into the Southwest from other states with a surplus of water. And there's no money to replace aging pipelines that have uh, been in existence for over a century. Also in the infrastructure bill that Biden signed, 73 cents of every dollar coming in New Mexico is gonna be for roads and bridges. You could make a good argument that that's not our biggest need. Um, so really, of all the 13 categories of spending, roads and bridges is the only category where we're getting an adequate amount of money. We need $2 billion for, broad, for broadband in New Mexico. We're only getting $100 million. That's only 1 20th of what we need. We're getting no money for um, high-speed rail. You might say, well, so what? Well, we're falling way behind the rest of the world in high-speed rail. China's got 25,000 miles of high-speed rail. We have zero. And Europe has uh, 10 to 15,000 miles of high-speed rail. If we can't move goods and people faster, we're going to continue to fall behind and not be competitive with the rest of the world. Electric grid. 
we have we have the second sunniest state, the fifth sun, fifth windiest state, and so we uh, produce a, have the potential to produce a lot of renewals, and yet we're getting no money for the electric grid. We need to tr transport all this renewables uh, to uh, other states. Um, so we uh, are in a position where the experts are telling me that we soon will not be able to uh, transport all this potential energy because we don't have the the electric money to for the electric uh, grid so uh, the benefits are are many and uh, the financing of how the finance works will be explained later by our uh, expert who has worked on these issues on a worldwide basis. Um, so yeah, the, the benefits are many, just briefly uh, create 25 million jobs um, and provide uh, made in America industrial expansion and promote disadvantaged businesses to supercharge the economy as it did during the depression. Literally without the, Without this uh, type of financing, we literally would not have uh, come out of the, the depression. And it uh, complements uh, existing money being used for uh, is infrastructure. And also, uh, I know you're all interested in, uh, particularly interested in, in, uh, in water and um, as I said earlier, we we fall far short of the water that of the money that we need for uh, water infrastructure. Um, the bank, which will be described later, will will invest four hundred billion dollars in new systems and bring water into the West. Uh, a recent article in the California paper outlined a well-designed water pipeline from the Mississippi River. Uh, to uh, Lake Powell, to Lake Powell, uh, as you know, uh, Lake Powell is, is almost uh, vanished. The water has, uh, over the years, has uh, been uh, grossly depleted. Uh, the, the, as I said earlier, the bank will produce, uh, uh, create uh, thousands, millions of new jobs, and Bacon Davis Bacon wages will be paid. And um, we in New Mexico have been working hard to promote this uh, this uh, concept along with uh, uh, many other states. 24 state legislatures have introduced or passed resolutions urging Congress to act on HR 339, um, including also Western state legislatures who have joined the effort, as well as, uh, as I said, uh, New Mexico. So this uh, this 3339 will will provide funding for much needed water infrastructure uh, and the, uh, the 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 bill that president biden signed in november of last year does does begin to provide the amount of money that we need to uh, upgrade our uh, our water infrastructure uh, just briefly, in New Mexico, we've uh, we've uh, been one of the most active states in getting and gathering support for this uh, for this uh, bill. Uh, we have two of our three uh, congresspersons have signed on to the bill, um, and we uh, are uh, planning another meeting with our uh, state senator Ben Lujan, and um, we uh, have. Uh, conducted uh, I've been part of a, a lot of uh, zoom meetings that have been broadcast uh, countrywide and um, I have spoken to uh, many uh, organ organizations uh, including the uh, National uh, Council of State Governments as well as the uh, councils of state governments and on this uh, topic so in conclusion uh, I urge all of you to to contact your uh, congressman, 
Congress persons and tell them that this is urgently needed. There may not be a lot of publicity on it, but just because it's a great idea and it's something that's uh, certainly um, needed doesn't mean that it garners enough support. So that's why we've been working so hard to uh, promote this much needed legislation. You know, if we are going to provide broadband um, to everyone, especially in the rural areas, we need to pass this legislation. If we need to transmit all the renewable energy in this country, we need money for the electric grill. The electric, not the electric grill, the electric grid. Thank you. If we're going to transport people and goods faster in order for us to remain competitive, we need this legislation. If we need to uh, have an adequate water supply, especially to the areas in the Southwest and other parts that are losing their water supply, we need to pass HR 339. So please contact your congresspersons and urge them to support this legislation. Thank you. Good morning. I am State Representative Joy Garrett representing the Northwest Quadrant of Bernalillo County in, in Central New Mexico. And I just wanna start by saying that when I became a teacher, I discovered that education is political, that being a teacher means you have to engage in politics at just about every level. And that's why I really have the deepest respect for Rudy Arredondo and all the people who founded the National Latino Farmers and Ranchers uh, Trade Association and, and held this Congresso. Rudy recognized that rural farmers, those engaged in agriculture at every level, need to have an organized voice. And one thing about those of us present at this event here at Is Isleto Resort is there's hundreds of people here and many of them are in the 18 to 35 year old age bracket. So we're really talking about the future of rural farming and agriculture, which many young people are attracted to because they no longer wanna live in a crowded urban environment. Uh, so it's great to be here. I think one of the biggest challenges and barriers that we face as legislators, as farmers, the people here is a comprehensive and innovative vision planning ahead for decades, not for next year's budget, not for next year's crops, but to get the adequate visionary innovative um, perspective that we really need. Um, and that's why I encourage everybody here who's either streaming this live or watching it later to get involved. And as Senator Tomlin said, to reach out to your local legislators, your national federal legislators to support the National Infrastructure Bank. Um, I wanna talk briefly about New Mexico, the governor, our governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham, appointed a water policy and infrastructure task force led by our state engineer, Mark Hammond. And this is really important because the problems he and his task force identified are so characteristic of many of our Western states. And I, I wanna talk about a few of the things they identified. Persistent drought being exasperated by rising average annual temperatures, catastrophic wildfires resulting from drought, which devastates our watersheds, declining aquifers resulting from reduced surface water supplies, aging water and wastewater infrastructure, which hits people in rural areas the hardest, the need for stormwater control investments, uh, the lack of consistent funding for proper human capacity development and data analysis. And then the need for long view planning and investment to correct years of underfunding. And this is a problem not unique to New Mexico. And um, in New Mexico, Representative Susan Herrera, who represents a huge uh, Northern New Mexico County, Rio Arriba, pointed out that 62 acequias were destroyed or damaged due to our New Mexican wildfires and then flooding. She also points out that major legislation with money directed uh, towards regional water planning is necessary. When she looked at water financing for Eastern New Mexico, 
it turned out that it averaged about $50,000 per farm. That's a lot of money. We need a lot of money to do the regional planning. And that's why I'm such a, uh, such a supporter and really trying to drive support for the National Infrastructure Bank. Because when we talk about regional planning, especially for water, it's not just within one state alone. It really crosses borders. As Senator Tallman said, people are now talking about water pipelines from Eastern flooding areas or Texas flooding areas to go to drought parched areas that cost billions of dollars. One state can't do it alone. The recent funding from the federal government can't do it alone. We really need a visionary project to fund this. Uh, so that's one thing, that's the main reason I support it. And finally, when we look at the cultures of our native people, our Hispanic people, our African-American people, our Asian farmers, and just everybody, regardless of race, as this farming movement emerges with younger people who are searching for a better quality of life, we have to have water. We know, you know, agua es vida, water is life, but it takes a massive influx of funding. It takes an awareness that this is not, it's a regional aspect among states, not, not just within a state that we have to do. Finally, I wanna say I'm the granddaughter of farmers. My grandfather farmed in Union County in New Mexico. His family left, my mother and aunt left with their parents because there was no water back during the days uh, in the 30s when we had the Dust Bowl era. I don't wanna see that happen to our new generation of farmers. We really need to have the funding to drive the infrastructure vital to keeping up these cultural and agricultural investments up. So um, as you hear more from my fellow speaker and our uh, expert economists online, I just really encourage you to get involved in supporting this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. My name is, as Ms. Lucero said, Dennis Montoya. I am the immediate past state director of New Mexico LULAC the League of United Latin American Citizens. And we are here, and I am here, in support of the National Infrastructure Bank because it's a good idea for our constituent group. I'm a Latino farmer and rancher. I grew up in Mora County, New Mexico, in a tiny town called Lucero, New Mexico. It's an acequia community, as Representative Garrett mentions. Agua es vida. I have seen during my lifetime, the local water source become sparser and sparser. We barely have enough water in our little acequia, acequia de Santa Rita to irrigate. And it's because of changes in climate. We're in a 1200 year drought. That's what the climatologists tell us. That is only one reason why New Mexico LULAC supports the National Infrastructure Bank. We didn't um, come to this support without having a number of questions that were answered very satisfactorily by the coalition. Number one, we wanted to know whether our constituent group would be adequately represented in decision-making for the bank whether our constituent group would be adequately represented in benefiting uh, from loans and grants made available through the bank. And at each turn and with each question, um, we receive satisfactory answers. We are convinced. And so we jumped in with both feet. We passed a resolution. Uh, New Mexico LULAC has passed a resolution as of May of this year supporting HR 3339 and encouraging uh, Congress to enter and support this resolution. Our own Congress people, uh, Congresswoman Ledger Fernandez and Stansbury have signed on to this bill and it is gaining support. It's gaining support because it's good. It's good for America and it's good for all the diverse people 
of America. It is not a new idea. This is, as Ms. Mutardi is going to explain, I think she's going to speak next. It's Alexander Hamilton's bank in its fourth incarnation. Every previous version of this bank, this national bank has been successful. The last one, my dad indirectly worked for. It was during the FDR years. It was um, the New Deal's tool for getting us out of the Great Depression. And my father worked for the Civilian Conservation Corps. And he earned good wages and he was able to help support his family during some of the leanest years that this country has ever gone through. Well, I grew up in a part of New Mexico that has never fully emerged uh, from the Great Depression. Uh, but I do believe that the National Infrastructure Bank offers us the opportunity to do exactly that, to join as full participants in the economic life of this country. Simply the existence of high-speed transportation along the I-25 corridor, and I tend to favor uh, linking all the way from El Paso all the way to beyond Denver, probably all the way up to Wyoming, would create incredible markets, incredible job opportunities that would benefit all the people of the Southwest. So um, as we hear more about that, I join Senator Tallman and Representative Garrett in urging you to support the National Infrastructure Bank to learn more about it. It is gaining momentum. There, are, there was a recent um, meeting, I believe, uh, in Washington, DC, at which some pretty close attention was paid to this proposal. And you will hear more about it. So please visit the NIB Coalition website, learn all about it. And I'm happy now to pass it over to our um, subject matter expert, Alfeka Mutardi. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you for having me on this delightful uh, occasion to talk about the National Infrastructure Bank. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I want to uh, see if I can bring up some slides. Can you see my slides okay on the screen? Yep, yes, we can. You can see them okay? Okay, great. Um, so I want to talk about this bill in Congress uh, in a little bit more detail, if that's okay. Um, we have the, uh, a bill, H.R. 3339, which uh, Senator Tallman and everybody's been talking about. What this bill does is actually creates a public bank to lend for infrastructure projects all across the country. Why do we need a public bank to do this? Is because we cannot afford to pay for these projects through budgets, either the federal budget, state and local budgets, municipal bonds, it's not working. So that's why we need a public bank to finance that, and we need a public bank that's large enough to do the whole job. We're getting great uh, support for this bill. We currently have 18 co-sponsors on the bill, including uh, two from New Mexico, as everyone has said. We're actively looking for more co-sponsors. And the way that this works is state legislators like Senator Tallman and Rep. Uh, Garrett have been pushing their members of Congress to sign on to the bill. That formula really works. And this is a grassroots campaign where you can contribute and get your state legislators and, and approach your members of Congress to get them to increase our support for this bill. The idea of a public bank is not new. We've had four really large public banks in our nation's past. Uh, this is the one that Dennis Montoya was talking about that helped his, uh, his family and built projects in New Mexico. And since then, really, there hasn't been an investment in New Mexico's um, um, infrastructure, and we need to change that and turn it around. I wanted to really quickly explain how this bank works it is capitalized, it's the Alexander Hamilton model. It is capitalized by uh, contributions from the private sector of their treasuries in exchange for preferred stock for these investors. And they would get paid a little bit extra out of the interest earnings from the NIB's loans. So that means this bank is self-sufficient 
doesn't require infusions from the budget to get it started or subsidize its operations. And then it goes on to give out loans exactly like a commercial bank does, uses the same accounting software and everything. Each time commercial banks book a loan, you might be surprised to know that they create a deposit on the other side of their books that actually increases the money supply. So the loan process of commercial banks is responsible for creating 95% of America's money supply. And then it uses its deposits and other loan payments coming in, other cash, to move money and circulate it out of this deposit and through the rest of the banking system. Loan terms are very advantageous so that communities like New Mexico will have the capacity to take on these loans. Very low income communities will actually get grants rather than loans. And then the borrowers will be any kind of government that owns a bit of public infrastructure, like the city of Albuquerque, which has endorsed uh, the NIB uh, um, legislation, I would uh, point out, by the way. So has uh, Rio, Ariba County done the same. And um, and that's, those kinds of support have resulted in uh, members of Congress coming in to sign on to the bill as well. We cover $5 trillion in infrastructure projects because that's what the country needs. The American Society of Civil Engineers has counted it all up. And they say that that's how much we need to repair our transportation systems, our water systems, upgrade our electric power grid. In addition, we added categories we also think the economy really needs, a complete high-speed rail network across the country, of course, broadband into every single rural area so that we can do telehealth and telemarketing and uh, bring farmers up to uh, connectivity with the rest of the nation. Affordable housing, 7 million units is what the lowest income earners in our nation need so that they will not be housing insecure. And then this area right here is the one that really New Mexico needs the most. Large scale water projects to address drought where we, have, where we grow half of our nation's food supply. We are currently not going to get enough from the bipartisan law. We are glad that it's passed, but it's too small. So you, here's a line by line comparison of what the National Infrastructure Bank will propose, will provide and what the bipartisan law will provide. This is one tenth too small. If we wanna fix infrastructure, let's be frank and start with what we need and then get a bank that's large enough to finance the whole amount. And that's what this National Infrastructure Bank will do. Not only will it build infrastructure, It'll build the American economy, provide, create 25 million new great paying jobs. Uh, as Dennis said, this was the last time when his father got paid well by working on projects that were financed by the previous bank, the Reconstruction Finance Corporation. This bill requires that workers receive Davis-Bacon wages, which are high prevailing wages in your area. Also, Buy America Only will, for the construction inputs, will promote American manufacturing, grow the economy even faster. We can get growth, GDP growth rates on average twice as high as they were on average, even before COVID. And again, all with no new federal taxes, spending, or debt. It should appeal to both Republicans and fiscal conservatives. That means this legislation actually has a good chance of getting passed. It'll also reduce inflation. How? We're really worried about your drought problem in New Mexico for all of the country. Why? Because you grow half of our nation's food in California, in Arizona, in New Mexico, in Texas. Already we see signs that farmers are under huge stress plowing under fields, selling off their herds in, uh, in advance because the grass is dried up and they can't feed them. This is going to impact food prices all across America. Over the next two to five years, it'll be devastating. We absolutely have to get water to farmers. We have to iron out supply chains and we have to fight against a new upcoming recession. The Fed is going to push down on the money supply to try and tamp down on inflation. That's going to put millions of people out of work. We can lean against that by uh, hiring workers quickly to do these long lists of infrastructure projects that are sitting in uh, Rep Garrett's and Senator Tallman's file cabinets of projects that haven't been done in New Mexico, get them started right away and hire workers to do this job. Here is the drought. 
it's devastating. Uh, 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 as Senator said, it's it, it's a it's a thousand year drought. Uh, really into its third strong year now water is just uh drought areas are burning up high temperatures low water along the colorado river um, um wildfires and this is where the aquifers are drying up as well because without water coming out of the mountains from precipitation uh they're pumping water out even faster we know for example in new mexico you just built a pipeline to bring water down from the uh, San Juan River, but now the San Juan River has gone dry, and so the pipeline won't be able to deliver the water. Arizona's had its water cutbacks uh, very severe as well. So this is a regional problem, and we need a regional solution, and that's what this bank can provide. We really want to help farmers and ranchers and rural areas. This is where we grow our food, as I mentioned. Uh, a lot of farming and ranching is becoming less and less sustainable. Uh, and that's because the economics are just not there to support them. One thing farmers need is connectivity. Uh, they need uh, local roads and bridges. They need this broadband. They need the high speed rail. Uh, they need uh, an electric grid so that they can produce uh, um, um, solar power on their farm and then get it shipped to neighboring areas uh, by a better enhanced electric grid. And of course, they need this water infrastructure. We dedicate $800 billion in our bank for drinking water and wastewater sewer systems, and another $400 billion for these mega water projects. So we have a plan for building out and uh, supporting farmers and ranchers. We also want to build, we also want to build and support low income communities. And we know that New Mexico has always uh, suffered from uh, low per capita income. Uh, we want to provide grants rather than loans for these very low income areas, and we have uh, specific um, things in our bill to make sure, and we've been approached by um, um, Latino groups and by Native American groups to make sure that we mention that we want to uh, have specific um, mention in our legislation to include tribal areas and make sure that we get all of these new resources, projected resources out into the very lowest income and poorest areas um, of our of our community. So in it for New Mexico, out of the five trillion dollars, the state could qualify for up to thirty three billion dollars over 10 years. That's this figure right here. Compare that to what you're going to get for the bipartisan law. Again, one tenth too small. You have lots of roads more to fix. Transit systems need attention. If we get high speed rail in there, we can promote, uh, uh, promote economic activity all throughout New Mexico. That'll help the farmers and it'll help other businesses as well. You need, as Senator Tallman said, you need two two billion just for drinking water and wastewater systems. The power grid has needs about four billion dollars just for unfunded improvements on the grid plus what moving the renewable energy, broadband, dam repairs, affordable housing, all of these things would be supported by the bank. And this would help uh, the whole population get uh, people into great paying jobs and raise the economy as well as build out the infrastructure. So I'll stop there. Thank you very much. Thank you, Afeka. Thank you for our panel. Does anybody have any questions? Well, I have a question because we had it. My question is who's gonna pay for this? because I think the answer um, is very interesting. National Infrastructure Bank, as I think I just mentioned, will not cost the taxpayer a single cent. It is 100% funded by people who hold treasury bonds um, who will invest them in the bank in exchange for a better interest rate then the treasury pays. This is why it should gather a widespread bipartisan support. It will benefit, as I said earlier, everybody in this country. I can't think of a single group that will not benefit from this, but Latinos will benefit greatly. And New Mexico Latinos will benefit greatly. And we see it in New Mexico, LULAC, as the opportunity uh, for us to achieve first-class economic status, which has been long delayed. So we very much encourage everyone 
in the Zoom audience and here in the audience at the Congreso to inform yourselves. Uh, I believe the website is nibcoalition.com. Um, inform yourselves about this legislation. Why wouldn't more people in leadership positions be supporting this? Well, they will if you tell them to. Quite frankly, I've been accused occasionally of being blunt. I think that there are some people that are, um, that are political leaders that don't like the idea that funding would come from a bank and not from legislative bodies. That funding would be impartially administered. That funding would not be pork barrel, but administered by a bank. And I think, I think our leadership needs to hear. Obviously, we do have elected leaders that, that have received the message. Uh, two out of three of our Congress people in New Mexico have gotten the message. Congress people all over the country have gotten the message. Um, parties, I believe the Democratic Party of the state of Washington has endorsed this concept. And we are in talks with the Democratic Party of the state of New Mexico. So this is just one, one road stop um, along, along the trail of gathering support for this proposal. But it's a proposal worth your attention and worth and worth your support. And as Dennis said, this isn't a partisan project. Declined in New Mexico, Republicans who questioned it because of the funding, they were afraid that it was going to add to their taxation, realized that no, it doesn't add to taxation, as both Alfeca and Dennis explained. So it's a bipartisan effort. Recently in the Albuquerque Journal, a Democrat and a Republican did an op-ed about getting water from Mississippi. And in the article, they recognized that the National Infrastructure Bank would be probably the only way to sustain the funding for such a project. So I truly believe if we wanna make our agricultural lifestyles and pursuits and our children's futures intact, we really need to pass this bill and create the opportunities that it creates. We have to do it now, not in five years, not in 10 years, but we really need to do it now.